If you are watching this, it likely means I've asked you to complete the distressing events timeline. This is one of the first points of entry in our EMDR work together, and it's an important way for us to get to know each other. My name is Dr. Cami, and I'm a trauma-informed individual and couples therapist. Let's talk about the distressing events timeline. So when I say timeline, it's a little bit deceptive, so let me explain. First, it does not have to be on a line. Second, it does not have to be in chronological order. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Also, your distressing events timeline may include traumatic events, but it is not a trauma timeline. It is a list of any situation that has caused distress for you all the way back as early as you can remember through the present day. As you do your timeline, do not edit what comes to mind. Just write whatever comes up and put it on your list. Let us decide together if it's important or not. Any event that causes some type of internal response in your body, racing heart, tightness in your chest, churning in your stomach, when you think about it, is worthy of being on your timeline. The fact that you are remembering it all is telling. Let's do that paragraph again. As you do your timeline, do not edit what comes to mind. Just write whatever comes up and put it on your list. Let us decide together in our meeting if it's important or not. Any event that causes some type of internal response, heart rate beating extra fast, your chest tightening, your stomach churning, is worthy of putting it on the list. The fact that you're remembering it at all is telling, and we should talk about it. Do not dismiss a memory that shows up in your mind's eye as you do your review of your life. It is important that you include some of your earliest upsetting memories, and they do not need to be traumatic, but they should be distressing. Your timeline is going to include four components. Number one, how old you were at the time of the event. Number two, the title of the event. This can be just a couple of words to jog your memory. Number three, your negative core cognition. And number four, the level of distress you feel today when you reflect back on the event. For example, when I was about five years old, my dad came home from a business trip with glass button covers in the shape of fruits that went all the way down my shirt. I was so excited that I immediately ran outside to play and show off these button covers to my friends. When I came back inside, my dad noticed that I had lost about 75% of the button covers, and he told me that I was selfish, that I was ungrateful for the gift that he had gotten. I internalized that and began to live with the narrative, I'm a bad person. As you can see, this was not a traumatic event. However, it was a very key early childhood memory that shaped my worldview and my identity. The narrative shaped many core aspects of my life until I healed that distorted belief about myself, both in my mind and in my body. So if I were making a distressing events timeline, I would have my first memory as age five, memory, button covers, level of distress on a scale of zero to 10, zero being no distress, 10 being the most distress ever. Currently, when I think about this memory, I'm at a zero because I went through my own therapy and I did my own processing. At the time that I went to therapy about this distressing event, it was about a seven. The negative cognition was, I am bad. This is a list of examples of negative cognitions that you can pick from and see which one fits best for you. When you consider distressing events, reflect back as far as you can go. It's okay if you can't remember far back into your childhood. Accept your memory wherever it is today. The timeline is not a biography. You only need bullet points for each event, just a couple of words that will spark your memory when we talk about it in our meeting. The idea is that I'll say a couple of words and then you'll tell me a little bit about the event when we review your timeline. If there is something you do not want to tell me because it's too embarrassing or you feel shame around it, you can just put private image on the timeline. You do not need to tell me what it is because talking about it does not necessarily heal it. All I need to know is that you have an image of an event and that you have a negative belief about yourself related to that event. I do not need to know what it is. 
I can have a very vague, confused understanding about an event that hurt you, and I can still help you. Everything is going to process in your brain and your body. My knowing or not knowing doesn't have much to do with the process. That said, many clients want to talk to me in detail about the events on their timeline. We can 100% do that, and it is my honor to hear your story. I am more than happy to listen if you ever want to talk about the events, and if you don't, that's also totally fine. There's two things on your timeline that will pr- that provide important, oh, that's incorrect. There are two things on your timeline that provide important information for us during our work together. One, your timeline reveals your negative core beliefs. And two, your timeline guides us on where we will start with this whole EMDR process. Please also remember not to compare. You may have 50 events. You may only have a handful. You also might have the same negative cognition for all, or you might have several different ones. This is your personal story. I am so much looking forward to thinking this through with you and going over it the next time that we meet. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out.